Hello everyone and welcome to this demo on how to create an Azure function that can communicate with your on-premises environment using the hybrid connection feature. We start with an empty resource group. We also have a domain controller and a virtual machine that we see in front of us that will be used as a hybrid connection machine. All right, so we click on create a resource and we choose to create a function app. And we need to give this function app a name. In that case, I would call it hybrid connection demo. Maybe yeah, the name is available. That's great. And then we need to select that it's using PowerShell or that I'll use PowerShell 7.2. Doesn't really matter. I just like to use the latest version. Uh, but in this scenario, it will not really matter. We can put it anywhere. It doesn't matter as well, as long as your machines will be able to reach it. And the most important part here is the plan type. You need to make sure you select the functions premium because the serverless one does not support hybrid connection feature. And because I already have an app service plan, it is suggesting that I use it. Uh, however, I want to create a new one dedicated to this function. So I will call it hybrid connection demo dash service plan and hit OK. And next for hosting, uh, it can be a new storage account. That's fine. Networking, I don't want to make any changes. Monitoring, we can keep the application insights or not. For now, I'm not going to keep it. And I just create the function app. This will take a couple of minutes. We can see that we have our storage account, our function app, and the app service plan. Let's take a look at the, uh, at the function app. And look under networking. We can see that for outbound traffic, it can do VNet integration and hybrid connection. VNet integration is great if your resources are already on Azure or if you have a site to site connectivity between uh, this function app and Azure. Hybrid connections is great if you just want a one to one connectivity to, uh, for this function. Add a new hybrid connection and I'll create a new one. The hybrid connection name can be anything you want, so I will call it hybrid connection demo 01. And now to the critical part, the endpoint host. We are basically telling the Azure function, if you want to reach this host, you use this hybrid connection. Uh, so this has to be the same as the name of the virtual machine that we're using. In my case, I can quickly find that. Let's just open PowerShell on the machine. And Computer name is Scorch01, let's copy this. And I'll go back here and paste it. For the endpoint port, in the scenario, we want to use WinRM. So we want to create a remote session between our virtual machine and uh, between our Azure function and the uh, uh, endpoint host. We will use an SSL WinRM session, so that would be uh, port 5986. We will create a new service bus, so I would call it uh, hybrid connection demo relay, and it will be in the same location. This will take another minute or two. And we can see here that the hybrid connection has been created. It is set up to use this endpoint. Our next part is to connect it. To connect it, we need to download the connection manager. So I just copy this thing, go to my machine, open Edge, and start downloading the hybrid connection manager, and then we just run it. It's a very small file, usually less than five megabytes in size. We just need to install it. It will take a minute and click on finish. And once it's installed, we can open the Hybrid Connection Manager UI. And as you can see here, we have the chance to add a new hybrid connection. We can either click here and this will open an interactive session. However, since most probably your server should not be having uh, all the internet access in the world, you can click on enter manually and this will ask you to enter a connection string. Let's go back and click on Hybrid Connection Demo, and there we can copy the connection string. So, let's go back to our machine and paste it. Once we add it, it will go and authenticate, and you can see here that the string has a special key that is used to authenticate. If it doesn't uh, get connected right away, you might just need to restart the service. So, I just go and restart the service. Open services, go and find Azure Hybrid Connection and restart this service. 
And just like that, it's now connected. And we can see here on Asia, on the Asia portal, that it now says it's connected. All right. So now we have the channel open. The, this connection will be listening to any connection that is going into this endpoint to that port and then can pass it through. This takes us to the next step, which is setting up our virtual machine to accept this connection. Bear in mind that in our scenario, the machine can be the same as the hybrid connection machine that we're using or another one. For the sake of this demo, it's the same, but in a, an actual scenario, it can be another one. We can also have multiple hybrid uh, connections that are all using the same endpoint for the sake of having uh, high availability. So for now, we want to set this up and this is very well documented over on the docs page in here. So the first thing you want to do is you want to configure your server to accept the um, WinRM session using SSL. The reason for this is that other techniques that are not SSL like a Kerberos authentication, for example, will not really work. As the function will need to connect over WinRM using SSL, we need to configure it. Let's just copy this code here and go back to our machine. And there I will open ICE. I don't have PowerShell version 7 on this machine. It doesn't really matter. So the first thing that this does is it ensures that PS remoting is enabled on the machine. We then want to create uh, a firewall rule on the Windows firewall that allows HTTPS incoming uh, over port 5986. And then we create a self-signed certificate that has the computer name on it. And finally, we create an HTTPS listener for WinRM. Now we see here that we have no functions. We can create a function here, but this will be created in the portal. I prefer to use Visual Studio Code to build the functions as it has all the tools I need to create this uh, function. To open a new Visual Studio code and make sure you have the Azure tools ready and installed there and click on sign in to Azure. This will allow us to authenticate and once this is done, we are now signed in and we can see in a second that we are able to see the function app. So this is the one that we're interested in. I will and if we expand it, we can see that there are no functions here just yet. However, if you go on the workspace here, you can click on create new function and it will ask you to create a new project. So I'll go ahead and do that. And I will put my project under C demo. And I will use PowerShell. And then I will go for the default HTTP trigger. I'll give it trigger one. And I'll just use the admin and I will open it in the current window. Once this is done, we can see that uh, VS Code has created a default template for our function that has only one function that uses HTTP and a bunch of other settings that are ready for us to use. And what we see here, let's make it bigger. What we see here is the default code for any function that is created. I will start by deleting whatever was in the default one. And the first thing we want to do is to add some credentials. These credentials will be used to authenticate to the WinRM session that we're going to create in a minute. And they need to be either an administrator or maybe you want to create a GIA endpoint for the machine to use. Start by creating the credentials. So what I'm doing here is an absolute no-no in a production environment. You never want to write your password in a um, in clear text in your code. This is a horrible security practice. What you should be doing is storing this password in a key vault and allowing this function using a managed identity to reach out to this key vault and get it as one of its um, environment variables. This approach that we are using here is just for the sake of the, this simple demo. Now that we have the credentials, we want to connect to our uh, winner and machine. So we will use session. Once we have this ready, we want to invoke the command. The reason I'm keeping it, uh, the session in a separate one is maybe in your code, you would want to use this approach in order to not keep on creating new sessions every time you're invoking a command. It's a common practice. And then session will be the session that was created. And script block would be 
I just wanted to throw something very easy, so I just got environment computer name. This will just return the computer name, and I will tell this function to return uh, in HTTP. Now that this is out of the way, we can save it and test it. So I save the file. In order to push it to the function, we need to go here, go to our workspace, and tell it to push, deploy the function app, choose our demo function app. That will give us a warning, telling us that this will override whatever is in the function. This is very critical. Make sure you don't choose a production function and break stuff. Click on deploy. And we can see it completed. So let's go back to Azure. Once we refresh here, we can see that we have a new function available to us. Let's test this function. And what we are expecting here is that our function should return. And we can see here and that we have an error. And if the error is access denied, most probably I screwed up the name of the uh, account here. So let's go to our machine again, and we can see that the name should be hybrid connection. This is the account that I should have used. So I'll go back to the code and tell it OK. This is the name of the account. Save and push one more time. And once it's done, it's time to test it one more time. No need to refresh here, but refreshing it will show that we are now using the new uh, username. Yep. And now if we test it, we can maximize this and clear it. And we can see the output is clear. We have score 01. And this is the first step. Now we are, we are sure that we have a session that goes into this machine and is able to create something. How about maybe using some Active Directory commands there? So let's test this. Instead of just returning this, I want you to return a list of the users. So get the AD user, and I will just get all of them. This is just a demo. I don't have a lot of users here. And maybe format dash list. And uh, no, for my paper, and tell it that we want to format it as the sun account name and maybe name. Right? And I'll tell it to out it as a string because we want to get this output into our body. I'll save this. And once deployment is complete, we can go and try. And when we try this time, I'm expecting to see an error here. The error basically says that it is unable to contact the server and does not exist, blah, blah, blah. Why is this happening? This is happening because here in our code, we are connecting with SSL. Credentials will not pass through. So although this account is a domain account, its credentials cannot be used to touch the domain controllers. What needs to be done here is to pass our credentials down to this session as, a, as an object. So we can just use here the credential and tell it using credentials. And it's uploaded. So let's go and do one more test. I start by clearing, reconnecting, and running it. And here we go. We have a list of the users in this domain. So this is very good. We now have a function that is able to, uh, that we can call using any API. Maybe you have a chatbot that you want to use to do something on an on-prem Active Directory. So this could be your solution. What we have here is very good. We can take it a step further. Maybe we don't want to, if we have a lot of functions, we don't want to keep on using this. We just want to have the credentials loaded for us. To do this, we can, because we're using a session, we can use the PowerShell default parameters attribute. So what we can do is invoke that command 
into our session and script block would be ps default parameters and in our scenario here we are talking about um, the active directory module so i will just tell it that whenever i use any command that is part of the ad module i want to use the credential and i would set this to be using credentials and i will remove this part now what we have here is once the session is created it will invoke a command that will set the default parameter value for any command that i'm going to use later on in the same session that uses the active directory module to use the credentials i just supplied this means that i no longer need to have the credentials entered in my get ad user command another advice that i have for you is make sure at the end you're always closing your sessions so remove dash ps session let's save this and upload it then it's complete time to do one final test and we see here it is still working however now it's cleaner because we are cleaning after our sessions and we don't need to keep on supplying it with credentials every single time so that was basically it another thing that you can do with this is if you're using scorch and maybe you notice that my machine here is called uh, scorch or system center orchestrator this machine is running windows uh, is running system center orchestrator 2022 which uh, has the new html console i have created a powershell module that can be used in order to call any runbook. So if you go here, you can see under uh, System Center Orchestrator, and this is available on the uh, PowerShell gallery. Just install it, and you can get your runbooks. You can also invoke them. Using the same technique, you, you can create a gateway between your on-premises and Azure. Maybe you have a cloud-based ticketing system that you want to integrate with your uh, orchestrator. And now you have a way to call it using the Azure functions and make your integrations much, much better. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave your comments, share the video and subscribe.